In this short video, we will take a look at the process of taking an embroidery file, a PEZ file, converting it into a cutting file, and then stitching it out on an embroidery machine. This is an example of the results that we can achieve. So a nice satin stitch all around the edge of our cut shape. There are some specific requirements for this particular technique. One is that your digitizing software must be able to export PES files and it must be able to export FCM or SVG files. Your cutting machine should also be able to read one of the three formats, PES, FCM and SVG, and your digital embroidery machine must be able to read PES files. Let's make a start by designing the thing that we want to cut first. So I'm using the PES um, design software for embroidery and I've set my hoop size here. Now I'm going to add um, a letter. You can either add small or large text using this software. You click, it then gives you the shape after you've typed the character in and of course you can use all sorts of different characters and do various different things. I'm keeping it simple for this though. I'll then resize it to the size that I want. And then change the font to something that I, I believe will cut well. Most things will cut well, but you'll need to look out for things with very fine lines or sharp corners. Next, I need to convert this into an applique design. So I'm going to use the applique wizard that's included in the software. And if I restore everything to the default, you'll see the changes that I make. So I'm not asking it to create the applique material. I am going to keep the tack down stitch. I'm going to keep the covering stitch and I'm going to replace the output pattern and this is an important step especially if you're creating characters with landlocked areas like an O or a P. And there we go. That's now converted it and there are now actually three elements to this. There is a placement stitch, a tack down stitch and the satin stitch. We do need all three and I am going to do them in different colours on this particular design but when it comes to the machine itself I will stitch them in one colour only. So I'm starting by assigning the characteristics so the single running stitch is going to be my um, placement guide and then the next one down is going to be my tack down stitch and then the satin stitch and I'm just playing a preview here so you can see that happening in um, the software itself to make sure that I'm happy with it. Now it's time to export what we need. So with this software, because it's by brother, we can export an FCM file. And that's the simple process of clicking on the button in the top menu clicking on the button in the pop-up box and then naming your file and saving it to a USB stick. If you have a connected device, so a, an embroidery machine that you connect up via different methods, this software includes transfer methods for those. I'm also exporting the embroidery file, the PES file, with the same name. and I usually save that to the same location which is on the USB stick. I've now taken that and transferred it to my scan and cut machine. I turn the machine on and then I'm going to load a pattern as I would any other saved data. It's via the USB stick and I'll navigate to find the particular file. Because I've got a CM900 machine here, I can just take the um, PES file as standard, but you saw there the scan and cut file as well. If you're cutting from the reverse of the fabric, don't forget to flip your design. And I'm now just gonna roughly place it on the mat. And now I'll load up my fabric.
For this particular cut, I have chosen to use freezer paper fused to the right side of the fabric. I'm therefore sticking the wrong side of the fabric to a standard cut mat. I'm using a brayer to make sure that it's stuck down all over and I'm being careful not to create any ripples or air bubbles in the fabric or between the fabric and the freezer paper as this could cause issues when cutting. Now I have already set my blade depth to four which is the recommended setting for quilting cotton but in a moment I will change the pressure slightly because I've used um, a paper topper. I'm going to scan a preview. If by the way I'm going a little fast in this video it's because obviously most of these, um, in fact all of these um, adjustments, changes or techniques or processes other than the process of taking the PES file to cut I've covered in previous sections. So if you're not sure on what I'm covering in certain areas you might need to go back and rewatch um, particular uh, sections. I'm going to increase the cut pressure to one because I just want a little extra force to get through the extra layer. Now that everything's loaded I can set this running and that will now cut out the fabric shape that I want to take over and stitch. Once the cut has finished, you can then remove the cut piece of fabric. The freezer paper will come with it. This just needs peeling off before we take it over to the embroidery machine. And because it's that removable wax paper, we le we're left with no residue on the actual fabric letter, which is perfect. Now I'm going to take the USB stick that I've saved my designs onto and put it into my embroidery machine. Then I'll call up the design using the method particular to this embroidery machine. I'm not going to explain these steps thoroughly because these will be different depending on the machine you're using. I'm using um, a 750E Innovis machine, but any machine that will take PES files will stitch this design. Now you can see I've got three colors listed in my color um, selection, but remember I am only using one color to do all of these. The reason I've done this is because I want the machine to stop in between each stage. It's a way of tricking it into doing that. For my machine I sometimes have to adjust the embroidery tension because I'm using double layer of um, tear away stabiliser. I've already loaded that into the hoop with the fabric and loaded the hoop and so everything is now ready to start stitching. I'll start that off and I might speed this up a little bit but it's always a joy to watch. You can see, by the way, indicated by the arrow I've just put on the screen, that it's starting with that first colour. And remember, we set that to be the placement guide. So this is just a simple running stitch. This won't actually be seen in the finished guide. It just shows us where to put our letter. difficult to see as I've used a matching thread here but you can see hopefully on this close-up what that placement guide looks like. Now to make sure this letter stays in place while it's being stitched I'm just using a, a temporary adhesive on the back of it. Um, you can use a spray adhesive or whatever method you prefer. I like to do this just to be extra sure that it's going to stay in place while it's being stitched. And then the next um, process that I'll set it going uh, on is the tack down stitch. So this is just a zigzag stitch that's going to catch the edge 
of the fabric all the way around the cut letter. There we go, that's finished the tacking down. Now I can move on just straight away by pressing start again onto the actual satin stitching around the edge of the letter. And I will speed this up a little bit so that obviously we can move through this video and get you on to doing it faster. There we go, that's now finished sewing. And obviously I would unload the hoop, remove the stabilizer, and in this case, I've um, done another alternative where I put it directly onto black fabric and framed it as a nice little gift for somebody. Possibly me, because my name's John. <laughs> 